Hi, this is Tony Paleo um, with Music That Makes Us. This is a local music show regarding the New England music scene, and I'm here with my co-host. Mark Stevens here, and we are very excited to have local music guru and promoter Kevin Andrews with us today. Thank you very much. Kevin. Thank you, guys. Yay. Glad to be here. Glad to always promote live music. Yes. Always. Awesome. Uh, Kevin, you've been doing this a long time. Yep. A long time. You know, especially the greater Boston area musicians all know you. Um, how did you get into this? Very simple. So um, I've been best friends with Brian Mace for a long time. So when I was about 21, the old Village Green days, back at the Crackers and Beverly and all those old places. Uh, oh, my God, you can go back to way before tequilas. So I was just a friend, and then I started tuning Kooks guitars. <laughs> and I went out, it's that, it all started that way. I was a behind the scenes guy and a fan. And through Brian, I met the guys from Fortune. Um, Pete was the first one I met through mutual friends. And he asked me, cause I do artwork, if I'd paint one of their album covers and I did. So I painted one of Fortune's album covers wow. back in the nineties. <laughs> wow. Yep, I airbrushed a, a whole cover for them. And that's where I met Lou and Bob and you know, and it just snowballed from there to the point where uh, friend of mine, Joe Crowley, who owns Pizza Pizza, bought Breakaway and said to Joe. me, he came to me and <clears throat> told me he was thinking of buying it. And I said, yeah, he said, they were going to tear it down and make a Whole Foods, the old Village Green. And I didn't even ask him, yo, is the money going to work? I was like, yeah, yeah, buy it. You know, because didn't, I didn't want to see it torn down. You were down. excited. I didn't want to see it torn down. And it, it, but Timothy's had kind of lost its live music venue. Um, a lot of people stopped playing after the Village Green. So the first thing we yes. did was get Brian Mace get fortune and change everything and all the bands came out because it's another tequilas had closed in the, in the years before that and it was just another mm -hmm. great a lot <coughs> of great music has been made in that building long before we had a part of it so it was uh that started me off and running with the bands there and i just have i love doing it i love doing it i love working with the bands as you guys know i love it yeah you do yeah, absolutely yeah yeah i agree timothy i went to timothy's before it was breakaway and i was <coughs> it was just it was just a bunch of empty rooms. It I felt was. Like. It was. Yeah, they had the the singles dances and the bands. Yeah. They did get it. Was it just wasn't when you when it was Lenny's and that's the first building it was. You had Miles Davis. You had Bette Midler play there. Well, Barry Manilow was or Dizzy Gillespie, and as it became Lenny's on the mm. Pike, you had Jay Leno do his first set. You had Buddy Rich play there, and then wow. as it opened up its doors and became the Village Green, it became more of a local music scene for everybody had played there all you guys have played there in one form or another and until the day we closed the doors we stayed we like to think that we made it relevant and made it current again in the music scene break away you so, know there's a, an, a lot of history from that room oh my ton. god ton kid you could fill a whole show of just the history of that building from day one when it was Lenny's, all the way till the closest breakaway what year did you get involved with that with breakaway yeah so I was told there'd be no math. Um, if, I had to, <laughs> if, if I had to guess, so I was there for seven years and we just closed. So I got, I got in there around 2016 and 17 with Joe and just started out. I built the patio outside. I hooked them up with Brian Mace to get the other bands in there. And then um, when the Texas hurricane, I worked on that show. And then he just said, you wanna just help out and stay here. So I did, and me, Joe, and Dan were all about the live music in that place. He had functions and everything else, but Joe's love of that building was with live music, and that's why he kept it as long as he did. He couldn't let that pot go. He had a hard time. Yeah. Still does. Absolutely. And it's funny, you mentioned Brian Mays a lot, and, and we know him. He's huge on the, local, yeah. on the scene. In fact, um, Jack has a... Jack who's filming this show has a great podcast with Brian and Mary Beth Mays and their oh. history. It's incredible what their history. Brian music. has been around for such a long time and has, you know, reached that upper echelon where he's been on. And I got, I got lucky as I went with Brian, I worked with Peter Wolf. I was on the road with them, RTZ. And um, I just, last weekend, Brian called me up. I came out of retirement and worked uh, Barry Gaudreau open for the Hollywood Vampires. So it was, uh, you know, Johnny yeah, Depp, big show. Alice Cooper, um, Joe Perry. So it was, it was awesome. I was happy for those guys, and it was, it was, it was great. So 
even though I'm still promoting, I'm at F355 now, trying to bring all the bands from Breakaway to give them just another venue to go to. Um, people hated when Breakaway closed because it was a nice place to go to, you know. And We were sad. Yeah. And, uh, and not just us, obviously. Yeah. Hundreds of people were sad. And yeah. there are great music there venues out there, and that's why it's important to go support Capone's and The Boat and Mix 360 and get up to... Um, you know, Hampton Beach and stuff in the summer and Gloucester. There's places everywhere, South Shore. Yeah. But there are great venues out here every week that there's got to be some place where you'll be like, okay, I'll go hear that. And go support them all if you can, you know. I know it's a lot to ask, but you guys know it's important. It's not just for the musicians. As people, you work, live music is just such a great release. And, uh, you know, we grew up with it as kids. Yep. We're not kids anymore, but we still have that same crowd, and we, we still, you know, I, I, I always laugh at, like, how did my parents, like, when they listen to 50, 60 music, is that what I'm doing now? Right. When, when, right. I, when I'm listening to that, is right. that what young kids kid are anymore, thinking? But, <laughs> but we have, we have like, like Mark's shirt. We have great <laughs> young bands that are playing Pink Floyd and The Doors and Arrow Smith and Led Zeppelin, and they're, they're very, very talented musicians. And it makes me feel good when I see a young band come in, not just doing that, but writing originals and playing three-part or mm -hmm. five-part rock music in a live setting. It's, it's awesome. It's beautiful. Yeah, it, it, there is a younger generation that's coming up. Who are some of the younger generation bands that, that you like pushing? And, and right love? now, of course, Juliana with Band Dink. Um, 43 Church Street, Dan McCarthy, also with River Sang Wild. Um, I mean, there's so many young bands out there. Natalie Jolly, who just went to Memphis, mm -hmm. mm. and she's killing it down there. April Cushman, who's up in New Hampshire, who um, has been doing some great big things up there. I mean, th there's bands everywhere. There's young bands all over. Mark knows, too. I'm sure I'm, I don't mean to forget anyone's name, but... Um, um, Rumbo Chili, another great young band. Mm -hmm. Those guys are the great kids. They're, they're awesome. Great and kids. they're all talented. And it's, the thing is, it's not just, okay, they look at that one person. And start, every musician in there, the bass player, the drummer, right. the, mm -hmm. you look at them all and you're like, what are these guys going to be like when they're 40, when they're doing this now at 22, 23 years old? Charing Cross, another band that I've watched come up from 16 to now they're old enough to drink. And now they're welcome in the club because they can bring... Kids that can drink into the club, but yeah. <laughs> it's it's you know it's great watching them the young bands because the older bands you love and every time you see them like a Brian Mace you everyone you, it's it's like a reunion the young bands you're amazed because you're like wow have they improved since the last time I saw them it's unbelievable and it's great watching someone like you come in the club on a night off which was my favorite thing at Breakaway when when a band would have a night off and they chose to spend it there watching another band. But it's great to see the older bands encourage all these younger kids and, and give them the time because it means a lot to them. And right. they think, like, you know, that you're unapproachable. And when they sit there and hang with you guys, it's just like, wow, you know? You know, I know I always try to, if there's an opening act, I always try to engage them. Yeah. 100% every single time, you know. And it's like a little family. We're trying to bring it up, right? So keep everybody yeah. engaged. Yeah, because they're keep, it's, it's almost like this is what you're going to leave behind. And we've worked hard for this music <laughs> scene. So putting it in your hands, now you guys run with it. And it's great because, like I said, the, the young kids sit there and they sponge off everything that the, the bands who've been around for a long time have to say. And it, it's nice because it's like, you know, is there a doctor in the house? I'll be at Breakaway and, or at F355 now, and I'll be like, okay, if a bass player goes down, I see five of them in the audience right That's now. Right. <laughs> but some of those right. down there too. So there's always, the show is going to go on no matter what because there's so many musicians that, support, that, that right. they, they walk the walk. They, they play their gigs and they encourage people to come, but they're out supporting it just as much when they're not gigging, and that's important. Yeah, and, and it's, it's funny when you were talking about the older, the older guys that have been doing this a while, coming to see the young bands, and, and now they've gotten so good, they're coming to see them not only to encourage them, but because they are admiring the them. The fans. I mean, talk about River Sang Wild, Harrison on drums. Yeah, you you've got, I, I've seen drummers at their shows in their 40s, 50s, 60s that have been playing drums since way before he was born. And they're like, I'm here to see Harrison. 
because right. I just and, 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 and I look at him and I'm like, good. how did he just do that? He's, when he's you, phenomenal. And the nicest kid you'll meet, he's Danny so McCarthy's cool. yeah, vocals. Danny. So but, and the thing about so that great. band too is, if you weren't looking at that band, you'd be like, I got to see who these five guys are. And you turn around, right. and you're like, Well, there's three guys on stage. That's it. They're so super talented. And yeah. what I love about them is, um, you know, as a as a club guy, it's like I love the young kids. They're not jaded yet. They're so yeah. guys. Can, guys, can you come in at this <laughs> yeah. time? Absolutely. Can you get off at this time? No problem. It's like they're, they're the best. But they love listening to the other bands and. And, and, and getting advice and, and just, you know, being appreciated by some. It's great to be appreciated by your fans, but seeing like a bass player like you go up to a bass player and say, wow, that's fun. That means a lot to them to be like, wow, this guy, you know, he likes it. I must be doing something right. Yeah, so yeah exactly. It, it makes them go forward. Yeah, Tony has quite a background in, in bass playing <laughs> and music in general, theater. Absolutely. And, yeah, thank you. I'm sure at some point in time we'll talk about that. We know. will. We will. He's but, being humble. <laughs> um, and no, and, and it's true because someone like Tony, um, like one of the things I said to Joe Kreiler when we started, I said, don't ever talk bad about a band because they've all played together at some point. Mm -hmm. And if you ever did like a tree of, of music around here, the connecting parts... Oh my God. Everyone that's around has played with someone who's played with someone who would come back. Like, you know, it, it's it's amazing how how you guys are interchangeable and step in for each we other. Really and, uh, right. You really are. We you really are. We really are. And it's 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 been it's been wonderful. Um, I really want to hear about the new club. At okay. Would you, would you want to hear about that? I of course I do. Well, I I've, yeah. I've heard about it, but I want to hear more about it. I mean, yeah. I love it. Mark's been there. The food's fantastic. The, the food, the food is, is fantastic. fantastic. So when when Breakaway closed, and we we shut the doors on New Year's Eve, I had a few offers to go look at some other clubs, and um, as everyone knows, I work full time. I I don't have to do this financially. I do it because I love it. So my only criteria when I met with a club was I want to pick the bands. And I want to pay the bands because I know what they deserve to get. And I know I, I, I yeah. just want to give it's not so much like the owner might be a Frank Sinatra fan or that you I listen to the people. We have Annie with country. We have um, disco nights. We have we have heavy metal. We have rock. We have classic rock. We have a multiple tribute bands. We have originals. We do solos. We do we do everything we can do. Open mic night. Yeah. So at F three five five, that's the first club that said to me, "It's your club. We trust you to do it your way." That's and, great. And I always say the same thing I said at, at Breakaway. I want to be the most band friendly venue out there. And the band is like an employee. You treat the band well, they treat the customers well, the customers treat you well. And it's all a big circle on how everything runs. Yeah. You know? And yeah. it's uh and it's all on your word too. You just gotta if if you promise to do something, you gotta deliver. You know what I mean? And that's how I think I have a good reputation with the bands on following through on everything. And I'm um, trying to make them as happy and comfortable as they can because it shows on stage. When a band is into the night, yes, that vibe is is through the room. Mark is is probably one of the biggest music fans that I've ever met, and Mark will tell you on a night where like, <laughs> eh, you know what? I don't know what's up with this band, but the but when the band is into it, you can't help, and it it's just such a fun night, yeah. you know. No matter what, there's been bands that okay, I'll bring them in because people want them. By the end of the night, I'm like, wow, these guys are good, you know. Mark has seen I brought bands up no one's ever heard of because I'm like, you've got to hear this band. Saturday night we have a band Mojo, yeah. they're from the South Shore. Three-piece band, Chuck Jambu, so on guitar. If you haven't seen there. them, you got to come hear them because the first time I heard them, I was like, wow, who are these guys? And I've been a fan ever since. And that's what I think helps me with my job. I'm a fan first. You know, it's, it's a business. And yeah. Joe and Dan were the businessmen. And even though Dan, Dan right now just left, he went on, was on tour with Bruce. Yeah, that's goes, right, yeah. He, he went all over Europe and everything. He's a big <clears throat> fan. And you got to be a music fan first if you want to. You can't just treat it like a business. It is a business, but if you don't love it, I don't care if you're a musician or if you're a promoter or a restaurant right. owner, whatever it is, you won't, you won't succeed. You yeah. have a piece of advice on that, actually. Even as, as a musician, I say, you can be serious about it, but it has to be fun. Right. Right. It has to be fun. You have to have fun with it. And yeah. it, it seems like the same way from the club booking and managing as well. Well, it is. I mean, at the end of the day, the, the bands want to go and have a place to play. People want to go and listen to those bands, so there has to be a place to play. Right. 
for the place to have a place to play, they have to make some kind of money to justify what they're doing. But if you love what you're doing, like anything, you'll never work a day in your life, and it's true. <laughs> if you love what you're doing and you, you just follow what works, and it's like you, sometimes you sit there and people like I don't like different promoters, even Joe or, or Frank, now at the new place. Kevin, I never heard of this band. You trust me. Right. Trust me. Right. And then they have a night with a, a band they never heard of, and they're like, wow, they were great. Bring them back. And sometimes it's because they financially did great, and other times it's because that's what you're looking for in the room. That's the vibe that you want to see in your club is everybody just, it's, it's about the music. That's it's right. about the music, That's you know, right. and it's, I think at Breakaway, there was very rarely did we have any problems in Breakaway yep. as far as asking someone to leave. Because I think once it started, everyone was on the same page and enjoying it. People came. That's what I like about a music venue. It's not like just a bar. People are there for a reason. They want to hear the live music. So they all enjoy it at the same time. It was like a family. People it still was. say that. And they're coming to F-355 like the extended family or the new family. You know, yeah, the same and, family, and but it's the everywhere. new place. You know, it you follow incredible. these bands, you go to Mix yeah. 360. They right. do a phenomenal job. Capone's has been around forever. Right. You know, Scott and those guys, they do a phenomenal job. And I, I mean, I love the boat. I think now Devin and Dave are, are musicians. Yes. They took the boat over, and it's um, built around music that venue it's in drake it and it can be a little bit out of the way but it, it's worth going up to because they are all about live music and the sound system is phenomenal awesome. and they treat the bands great and um like if you're not going to come to f355 go to one of these other clubs and and support all the bands support them all you know part of when i started coming to break away a lot more for the bands before i really knew you part of what i was impressed at with you and, and why we became friends, not just a guy to throw out at the end of the night, right? <laughs> you were the guy. <laughs> you were the guy. Um, All right, Mark, you got to get out of here. <laughs> exactly. Because I always respected the fan in you, like you said, because you were like, have a great gig. Even, even a band was playing somewhere else. They're playing at Capone's. Have, they're playing at Mix. They're playing in Gloucester, like you said, right? And you were always like playing at Opus when Opus was still yep. open. Unfortunately, that's another one we lost in Salem. Mm. And you were always, even if you had a show that night on Facebook, on social media, you all, you always said, "Have a great gig." You know, I'm like, no, I want you to come to my place, which you did, of course. You, sure. you promoted your sure. place hard. But if you're not going to come to my place, then go, go to another somewhere. place. Yes. Then go to another yes. place. Yes, and that's the fan in you, the and that's one, one of the one things, things I always respect. One thing I'll say is, is um, during COVID. When everything was shut down. Yes. I, I talked talk a lot. Like, that. I got on the phone with Devin. And I got on the phone with Devin from the boat and Anthony from Mix 360. And, and we all said, okay, listen, the competitiveness has got, we, we got to survive. Clubs are closing down left and right during right. COVID. Well, what can we do? So we decided to be open with each other about, listen, here's how this band did at our club. you got to get, not I want to keep it to myself. Yeah. It's like, Devin, you know what? This band here, take and put in your club. They did great. This is the kind, I can tell you this, you'll need more Bud Light. You'll need this. This band, they like mixed drinks. This band, <laughs> and we it. knew what band did, and we <laughs> talked about how, to, how much should you pay them? How did they do at the door? How, how many people should I expect to show up? We shared all our information to try to improve, improve and keep our clubs all going. And when COVID ended, we still do it. Yeah. We, we support each other. And uh, as Mark knows, I just was helping to promote a show um, with Mix 360, I've sent many bands up to um, to the boat and Capone's and um, Rosaria's is um, a place that's trying to do live music. I've sent bands I've, their way. It's if I can help out, and I, I absolutely will. Yeah, you know? yeah. Rosaria, they, they Rosaria has a half of the people from Breakaway, the other half that didn't go somewhere else. So I'm I'm excited about that. I do want to mention. I, I just do want to talk for a few minutes about how. You really tried, you, Joe Crowley, you really try to keep things going during COVID as much as yeah. you could within the regulations. You had the outdoor stage, you had, you brought in, you, you had sort of private parties because you couldn't Before open to the you public. Could be outside. When everything and, was shut right, down. Right. So, Mark, you kind of started that. Yeah. Because <laughs> I started with um, a super fan. We, right? me, me and Joe, <laughs> one night, and, and you can always see it on. Um, on on Facebook, it, it'll pop up a lot. But one night, the place was closed. Joe said, "Hey, meet me down here." 
So I went down and we did a little skit where I was in my feety pajamas and because I had no place else <laughs> to go. With. This is when I tell you everything was shut down. You couldn't go anywhere. Yeah. So we invited Mark in because Mark was always the guy at the end of the night, the last one to leave Breakaway without fail every time. So <laughs> part of the joke was at the end of the night, Mark would come walking in and he was like, what are you doing? And we're like, Mark, we're closed. So as we did that and people watched it and then I think we did um, a video together um, with everyone. Super fans. And then I said, you know what? Let's do something from the club. And I, I've, I'm trying to remember who the first person was. And I don't remember. I know we had Danny Klein. We had Hirsch. Hirsch. Mm -hmm. We had Tangerine. We had drummers. We had fans. We had, but every Friday night, we would, and everyone we made sure we were six feet apart. And um, Scotty mm -hmm. Pizzo, who was the best sound guy around, came in on his own time set up for sound once he saw me i was doing it at first like with my phone and then we started getting everything with the, the laptop and scotty did sound and every friday night it was fun because while everything was closed down we had a band and we would do like an hour of q a and biography whatever everyone could type in there and then they would do a set yeah and that's when Beautiful. nothing was going on anywhere and then we got the go ahead to go outside and we built the stage outside and we did that until we we're back inside but yeah, we tried to keep live music going as much as we could. Shout yeah. out to Scotty. Yeah. Scotty. Unsung hero. Oh. Uh, Unsung. W without a doubt, when Breakaway closed, when, when Breakaway closed, I, um, I said to everyone that the reason why our place sounded so good is because of Scott. Yeah. And the first question out of every band's mouth that we booked was, is Scott doing sound? Mm -hmm. That was every band. And, and if, if, what the second question was, can Scott do sound? So Scotty is without a doubt, and a great musician, the Slush Puppies, right. and Scotty's right. voice and guitar, and his band that has been around for a long time, they're the best. North Shore legends. They're, they're, yeah. Yeah. Really? Absolutely. yeah. Absolutely, yeah. So, and, I, and, I, and I love having them, and he'll be coming to F355 soon with the Slush Puppies. Yes, cool. great. Really? Yeah, we're working on a date <laughs> right. for, the, for the fall. So. And Scotty just did this show I just did with the Hollywood Vampires and Barry Goudreau. Scotty did the sound, so that's the level that Scott's at. That Ernie Bach Jr., uh, whenever he has anyone in town, like Scott would be like, I, ha I, I can't work this weekend. I'll send one of my guys. I'm like, why? Where are you going? Well, Cheap Trick is in town. I'm going to go do Cheap Trick. Oh, well, if you got to go do Cheap Trick, Scott, I guess you got to. But that's Scott. He is. The goal is, goes. He is sought after. <laughs> when I talk to other sound men, and a lot of sound men have like big egos. Sure. They really do. Not to knock them. I mean, they're everything. I'm like, I'm like. If you can't do it, who do you like? They all say Scott. Right. They all say Scott. And, and, and Scott's the same way. Scott can't be everywhere. Right. So Scott's happy to say, go get Jeff Johnson. Yep. Go get Greg Scapaccia, who has been super huge at F355 for me, helping right. me get this on because a lot of places, and he's moved time aside. And he's a great musician in his own right and just a, a wonderful guy, as Mark knows, yeah. but a very Absolutely. good sound guy. Yeah, he's, Jeff Johnson, he's, who's a very good friend of mine. Yes. And then I'm like, hey, I didn't what? know that. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, Jeff's my boy. He's awesome. Yeah, he's, he's, <laughs> he's got a lot of boys. He's, he's, he's I got a lot of boys. He makes a lot of things Sorry, for me. I know. And that's I where excited. it really came from. He's like, oh, Scotty's the best. <laughs> that's what yeah. He says. And, and Jeff, is, Jeff is one of those guys that is just like super professional. It's like he takes it very serious. Right. And the way that you will critique your own night, like musically, it was either sound. That's how Jeff is would sound like. He, he'll go home. Either like, oh, that could have been better. Uh, at the end of the night, he'll be popping champagne because it was sounded awesome. But he knows, and he's, he's not one of these guys. That Ricky Porter's another one. Does great sound and another musician. But they, yeah. when they do sound, I'm amazed at everyone. I'm amazed at a bass player. I'm amazed at a piano player. And I'm amazed at how all you guys just, I'm amazed at the bartenders, the whole it's scene. Incredible. It's incredible. It's everybody. And the fans who come out, sometimes I look at Mark, I'm like, I'd be dead right now. <laughs> this is like the fourth night this week I've seen them. <laughs> well, you and know what? I don't know how they do it. A lot of this, yeah. as, as Mark calls it, the family, so to speak, you kept a lot of that together. Oh, thank you. You really did. You really yeah, did. But, but it was easy to, like I said, when you love it, it was easy to do because um, we had a place and we just did our thing and everyone came out and supported it and um, I hope they come support the new one and all the other ones that are out there. And there's a reason to come out. And it's like, listen, like Mark, you can't go hard every night, and he doesn't. 
but he still goes out. Like, <laughs> yeah, just because he can't, doesn't to. stay in, he comes. So that just shows you that right. it's not because he's going out. It's to listen to the live music. Everything else just falls in place after it. It is. <laughs> and then you get, you get new friends there. You meet new people. It, it's just amazing. I, oh, I, I've got some top, like both of you are perfect examples, but there's so many people that weren't in my life before Breakaway. Yeah. Um, I can't name them all, but like a few that I've written, like someone like Rick Means, yeah. great guy. And Rick is not a musician. He's just a fan that came out. And we've talked like every time he was there. And the I've met so many people yeah. like that. You know, awesome. regular people that just come out. And everyone has the one bond, which is the music. Whether yeah. you're working at the bar, whether you're singing at the bar, whether you're hanging at the bar, everyone is in for the music. And I love it because the like the servers and bartenders they knew the bands because they'd be like who's here this weekend you'd say a band they'd be like oh yeah yeah and they know i'm gonna make yeah. some money you know <laughs> and they're like yeah and you gotta get that band together they right. become fans right away because right. it's a business and they know what's good for business and like if you cheers. gotta listen to it every it night it was like cheers it was it, it, was. <laughs> it was like it, the real life cheers with music <laughs> yeah <laughs> not and, just like and everything. it was that we all we always Bar said if we could have put cameras and break away what a, oh. what a fortune we would have made right as a reality show i don't think that would be legal <laughs> oh. but it would have been hilarious would have been hilarious it it would have make been a hilarious. Fortune. we'd have the fortune you know. until we got sued <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah i think it would be like you know beyond uh, yeah I don't but know you would I'll, rate that. I'll be honest with you. I'm surprised it hasn't been done yet. Yeah. That there's not some rock club or music venue where you have all these different personalities working there. Okay? And there are some personalities that work these shows. Oh, yeah. But mm. then you add in the musicians yeah. and the people who follow them. And you have all kinds. And it works. Can you picture but a camera a in, the, in, the, in that back dressing room of Breakaway? <laughs> oh. you picture what a camera would have been like there'd be a lot of hold on a minute oh there'd be a lot of this God. we shut that off for a second but yeah but think of think of just the building in general places like like bun Raddies and crackers and the channel and places like that if those were recorded i mean yeah. how, i worked at bun Raddies. right and would, wouldn't you kill for just like one month's tape of like the summer oh. of the summer of 89 at bun Raddies? Or that, Grover's, absolutely. you know. Or, that was pretty intense then. It yeah. was. It was awesome. I learned a lot there. Tuning, like w with Kook, I, I realized how good a musician, uh, just a quick Kook story, because you'll know. I used to tune his guitar, so we're in the basement. I'm tuning his guitar, my electric tuner. And he said, go up one note. I said, why? Well, he goes, because you're in the basement. I said, really? So I did. And when I, by the time we got upstairs and I put on the tuner, it was where it was supposed to be. And I'm like, I was like, wow. Wow. This wow. is Kook Laurie. Kook Laurie. Laurie, yeah. So yeah. An, another, I mean. Legend, local like, legend. Legend, right? There yeah. were so many great, like, you just look at Boston in general, but the New England area. Spoiled. And, and people who've gone like Hirsch Gardner and them and who, who, you know, Paul Stanley, you know, what, produced one of his albums for New England and Mass and Fortune and Brian Mace. And you got all these bands. I mean, look at Extreme playing tonight at Hampton Beach from around here. Right. I mean, so many great bands. Before, not even talking about Barry Goodrow in Boston and the Cars and Arrow Smith and it's just you know Peter Wolf and it, it's it's awesome. I remember yeah. growing up, and there would be like two to three bands on on the one block. Yep. <laughs> you know, we produced a ton of good musicians, and traveling throughout the country, that culture isn't everywhere no it is well, not well you know what it, it is, is too not. technology is a wonderful thing but back when we were younger if you wanted to see a band you had to go see the band no. you know before mtv and i know i'm really dating myself now <laughs> but that was how you saw live music you heard a band on tv you heard i mean you heard the band on the radio i'm gonna go get that album you got that album you played it from front to back right and Wore then out. you found out where they were and you went and saw them and then you heard of a local band playing, whether it be the church when you're younger, at the school gym. And then from there, you went to the small clubs. And because when you were 14, 15, you could only go so many places. By the time you were 20, 21, now you were going to, to Grover's and Bun Ratties and, and the Trackers. Channel. The Channel. And, oh. and uh, the Piccadilly Philly in Salem and, you know, Bleaches. <laughs> oh, and yeah. All these places that we, I yeah. mean, Lynn had them up. But like you said, you could go into a club 
and listen to two songs and take a walk and go five seconds down the street and there's another band. Lansdowne they were street. everywhere. Lansdowne Street. I mean, Hampton Beach in Salisbury. You walk out one, go into another. It's like... And then there's the and outdoor. That, and it, yeah, and it, was <laughs> fun. it was phenomenal. And I, I know I'm an optimist with this, but it looks to me like a lot of that is picked up again, that there's a lot... Even though we lost, it. like I heard the skybox will be shutting its doors before January, so it's another one closing. Mm. But there's more. seems to be more live, live places opening up and going. Yeah, I know. You got, the biggest thing is you got to come out and support it. We're going to be closing down in a few seconds here. So any final I, words, Kevin? Come out and support live music. Just um, come, come to your local music venue and support these bands. Awesome. You couldn't, we couldn't have said it better. Amen. The music that makes us. It is. It, it is. <laughs> it, it brings really us together. Is. Bang. <laughs>